Hey students, Tim here. Welcome out to the first lesson in the home music theory course. For this course, we're going to be using this book. A link is in the description. And today, we're going to be talking about... And specifically today, what we're talking about is everything music theory students need to know about reading music, including ledger lines. Okay, so the first thing you need to know about reading music is about the staff. So we've probably seen that in music pretty much everywhere, where you have five lines and four spaces in between those lines. And then obviously, depending on which line or space a note falls on, on will tell you not only what note to play, A, B, C, D, E, F, or G, but also where on the piano to play that note. But as a music theory student, um, it's still a good idea to have a pretty good idea like how high up these notes are or how low. So it is worth paying attention to for sure. And you're gonna have to know how to read music anyways. So here we go. They've labeled all five lines from the bottom to the top and all spaces from the bottom to the top. Very, very important here, from the bottom to the top. That's how we're gonna figure out all these notes. If you do it any other way than from the bottom to the top, think about how a tree grows, right? From the bottom to the earth, up to the sky, or at least part way there. So think about it that way. And um, notes can either like go up, like they have right here, boom, 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 or they can go down. And you always wanna be paying attention, especially as a music theory student, whether notes are moving up or whether moving down or they're kind of moving up and down all at once. Movement between notes is super duper important. And then on the piano, you know, um, the lines of that I just showed you, the treble clef, are basically from right here, we'll go into this in more detail, up to here. So you got E, G, B, D, F. So we are moving up the piano the same way you move up the staff. So it makes sense. I'm gonna let you do a lot of this on your own. However, well, it just says draw the staff. So basically you are connecting each line and drawing straight lines. I think we all know how to do that, except for me because I am really terrible at drawing straight lines. So you may need a ruler, but you can do that on your own. Um, you know, just go straight across. And then it says mark on the staff, mark an X in the following location. So line three, again, counting up from the bottom. If you do it any other way, you'll get it wrong. Um, so there's the third line, space two. So here's the first space. Here's the second space up from the bottom. Line one, well, that's on the bottom. And then I'm just gonna do this one for you um, and then I'll let you do the rest. Space four, one, two, three, four, right there. So all we're talking about right now is whether it's on a line or a space. And then down here, all you gotta do is draw a note on what they're talking about. So it's literally the same type of thing. Space two line three, and then I'll let you do the rest, except now you're drawing a, a little oval there. Those also called a whole note, gets four beats, but we'll talk about that later. Um, and then this one's really important, probably the most important part of this page. Well, never mind. This is indicate whether the second note is higher or lower than the first note using an H for higher or L for lower. So this one, the second note is definitely higher up. And again, it correlates to the piano higher up in the pitch. So, you know, if this note's here, wait, let me show you, if this note's here, this next note's gonna be right there. And they're right next to each other on the piano. And sure enough, they are right next to each other on the staff. So again, super important for theory students to be paying attention to how far apart these notes are. So again, like this one, this one's a little bit further on the um, apart on the staff, therefore, it's gonna be a bit further apart on the keyboard as well. So the second one, is the second note higher or lower? Well, it looks like it's going down to me, so you're gonna not draw a D, you're gonna draw an L for lower. The second note here is definitely higher. Let's pick one towards the end. How about this one? Lower. And then if you want, you can say like, okay, these are real close together, a little further apart real close together, fairly close together. You know, just start paying attention. It's not written on the page, but start paying attention to how far apart those notes are. All right, finally, we're getting into the treble clef. Not even finally, we're all just getting started. So the treble clef looks like this fancy G, and they actually also call it a G clef. And the note, that the line that's like right through the middle of that G there, 
or the treble clef as it's called, happens to be G. Uh, that's another reason it's called the G clef. Not only does it look like a fancy G, but the G is right there, as it tells you there. Um, again, you can read all of this on your own. I kind of just paraphrase it into my own language because I do understand this stuff a lot. So always make sure that you're reading on your own um, because you might catch something that I didn't go over. But for the most part, I got you covered. All right, so one thing I want to show you is that there are obviously lines and spaces to the treble clef, just like before. And the way we learn the treble clef, at least a lot of us, is we memorize a saying and each first word, each first letter of each word in the saying corresponds to each note. You've probably heard this before. Every good boy does fine. E for every, G for good, B for boy, D for does, and F for fine. Now, question, do you have to count from the bottom to the top? And the answer is, yes, you do. <laughs> Let's uh, go on to the next one with the spaces. The space is no need to memorize a certain saying. It's literally face, spells the word face, F-A-C-E. So remember, every good boy does fine, E-G-B-D-F, and then face. The number one thing you want to get out of this page, and actually as an assignment for next time, write this down, is to memorize this and this, and then what's on the next page as well for the bass clef. What they're showing you here, or here rather, is that if you put the lines and spaces together, on the piano, they all go right in a row. So here's your first line, here's your first space, here's your second line, here's your second space, third line, third space, fourth line, fourth space, fifth line. And then after that, you're going into ledger line territory. However, if you just take the lines, E, G, B, E, F, you are skipping over every other note. Same thing with the spaces, F, A, C, E. Same thing works with the bass clef. And then when you put them all together, it's every note from E up to F right there. Okay, back to the book. You can draw treble clefs on your own at your own peril. Let me see if I can do it. Wow, that starts there. That's not how I do it. I go like this. Maybe that's why I do it so poorly, but I don't know. You can you can figure it. Oh, they've already drawn that. So you would do like this on the tray. So I was drawing it right. I'm just really bad at it. You know, don't judge me, guys. Unless it's for good stuff, then you can judge me. That's so bad. <laughs> oh, that's probably one of the best ones I've ever done. So anyway, um, just like in kindergarten, you can draw those on your own. And then uh, write the letter names of the following notes on the letters. Now for this page, you may cheat and use that if you need to. But I would try to remember all the things you know that we learned here. So um, the third space up there, which is where that note is, that's definitely C, because that spells face, right? And then every good, so that's gonna be G. And if it makes it easier for you, you can be like, all right, every good boy does fine. And then just skip along to all the lines first. So it'd be like, all right, there's G, that way you don't have to shift gears all the time. So you got every good boy, so you got B there. You got every good boy deserves fun or fine. Every good boy does fine. Sorry, I use kind of a mixture of a lot of these E, D, and then I'll do like a couple of the spaces and let you do the rest on your own. Um, now we're back to the face thing, F-A-C-E, from the bottom, so there's F, and I'm gonna let you do those two on your own. I shouldn't have done that many. All right, it says write the notes on the staff indicated by the letters. If notes can be written in two places, write one above the other. So I gotta tell you right now that on the staff, there can exist two Ds, two Cs, uh, two Fs. Usually not any more than that. You want three because of how big of a span that would be. Um, but Let's continue here, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So for instance, you got your first space F, and you got your top line F. Now wait a second, let's take a look on the piano where these would be. So this first space here is right here, and that top line is there. We call that an octave. So like there are multiple Fs on the piano, there are multiple Fs on the staff. But like I said, just because of the span of 
how it works. Um, if you had another F up here, you would actually need a ledger line for that, which we'll talk about in a minute, but just keep in, that in mind. So here for the first one, they've written in the two Fs here. Now we're looking for D. Now there can only be one for some of them because we're only talking about the staff right now. We're not adding any lines or anything. So every good boy deserves. So there you go. Um, or it does. And then F A C. let's see, F A C. It might take you a little bit longer to get these than I do. Um, and then B, I think there's only one B. So a lot of these, it's only one. I'm telling you, you know what? I think it's only that one. No, 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 no. Okay, so let me put it this way. If the notes are really far apart, like an octave, chances are there are going to be two, especially if the bottom one is like an E or an F. Like this one, for example, E. Well, you know that bottom line's E, right? And again, I'll get these faster than you. Don't worry about it. It'll take you time. Go through and, you know, you can double check. And then um, F, A, C, E. E, so the top one here. So again, there's a pretty big difference between these. The bottom one is um, happens to be E, so there's gonna be two of them. A, A doesn't occur until like right here, so there's only gonna be one. So a lot of these, pretty much all of them, there's only gonna be one. And this last one, you can cheat and copy that one if you want to. Don't cheat though. All right, <laughs> this one is the bass clef, also called the F clef. Um, in the middle of those two lines is the note F. And just like before, we're counting from lines and spaces from the bottom to the top. Don't do it any other way. It's wrong. Uh, same thing here, except the sayings are different. This time we begin with G. So good boys do fine always. G for good, B for boy, D for do, F for fine, A for always. You got all cows eat grass for the spaces. A, C, E, and G. And then when you put them all together, they go all right in a row. So let me just show you on the piano where the lines would be. So here's the thing I want you to get, um, to understand is that with treble clef, we were talking about for middle C, this is middle C by the way, up this way, but bass clef is middle C down that way. And the first line, you'll get a better idea on how this goes as we go along as well. The first line starts here, G, and then the next line's here, and you're skipping every other note, just like last time with the treble clef. Spaces start with A, and then go over every other note. Oops. Yeah, there's only four of them. <laughs> I got carried away a little bit. Uh, so you can draw these at your own peril. You know, I'm better at these because it's a lot simpler, but you know, that one wasn't bad. So we're gonna stop while we're ahead, at least I will. Being able to draw these isn't super important, but if you're gonna be a music theory student and you're going to be writing your own music, obviously there are music composition softwares, but you might need to jot something down really quick on a piece of paper. And you know, you're gonna have to be able to write those treble clef and bass clef, at least some semblance of it. So you actually know what you wrote. Then it's write the name notes, the letter names, geez, I can't talk, of the following notes. So B, I'll give you right now there that that's G. Again, with this page, you may cheat uh, to figure it out. You know, that one's A. I'm not gonna write them all in like I did the last time. That was bad of me. And then this one, the same thing. If, you know, you're looking for at least one, you know, I would actually go through all these and just find the one on the staff. And then what you do is what? If you notice one is really low or really high on the staff, then chances are there could be two. You know, it's like the Highlander. If anybody knows what that is, there can only be one. Um, geez, nobody knows what that is. All right, anyway, on to the next page. The grand staff. This is really easy to understand because all you're doing is you are literally adding in both uh, of them together. And on the piano, that's like how we see all piano music. Let me get something for you. Here's some piano music. You got treble clef and bass clef at the same time with this little bracket here. That's the grand staff. And that's what we use when we play with both hands at the same time. Now you may be thinking, well, Tim, you know, like I play guitar and I play this and I play that. 
is it really important for me to know piano stuff? And yes, it is. Um, and I'm gonna tell you why really quick right now. So on the keyboard, so when you're writing like for a, uh, a band or something, you're gonna have multiple instruments going on at the same time. And piano involves, you know, you have 10 fingers to work with. So a lot of times in piano music, you're gonna have some kind of bass line. like maybe chords in your right hand. And then have like maybe a melody going on. So you can actually map out like, okay, you know, maybe the guitar will strum those chords, the bass guitar, they play your bass line. And then maybe like a saxophone, will play your melody up top. So if you learn the basics of piano and how the notes are laid out, you can actually write music a lot better that way, which is probably what a lot of theory students are going for. Not all, you know, some of us are pianists like myself. Okay, so this is the grand staff. This is literally the bottom line of the bass clef up to the top line of the treble clef and all the notes in between. Now, one thing I'm gonna tell you about is the ledger line. So here's the weird thing, is that we've actually haven't found middle C yet on the staff yet. And we're about to right now, and I just wanted to point that out for a very important reason. Middle C is on a ledger line, literally in between those two staves. Remember when I said that treble clef is from here, middle C on up this way, and bass clef is middle C down that way with the first line of the treble clef actually starting a little bit above C here. So that's why we need an extra ledger line to tell us where that is. And the top line of the bass clef is actually just ends right there. So we just need a little space in between to connect those. And so we use this thing called a ledger line, which helps us read high up or high below the staff. You can even have multiple ledger lines which gets real fun. I actually have a bunch of videos on how to read ledger lines really quick. Um, you can search them on the channel if you want. Um, so just showing you that when you need notes really high or really low, use your ledger lines. Here, this part is probably the most important part of the whole um, page to understand, is that when you start going off the bass clef, so remember that this top line was A. Remember, hopefully you do. Well, the next note up would just be the space right above the staff. Because when you add a ledger line, you're actually adding spaces too in between. So you got your C, you got a space in between B and then A. That makes sense because in the alphabet, you go A, B, C, just like that. Now the treble clef goes kind of the other way. So remember, by the way, well, I'm gonna tell you that in a second. So remember that the bottom line of the treble clef was E. Well, if you start adding in a ledger line, that would be C. You know, the note in between there would be D, right? E, D, C. It is kind of tricky counting the alphabet backwards. And then you go one back, which is B. One thing I, I just noticed that I'm surprised they haven't mentioned is that the music alphabet, you probably have gotten this from the video so far, only goes from A to G and then it repeats. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, G, F, E. You will actually want to start counting the that set of letters backwards. So A... G, F, E, D, C, B, A. And that will help you count up, forward, and backward on the staff a lot faster. So just keep that in mind. I'm surprised they didn't write that in the book. Um, hopefully I didn't miss it. So learn this. The most important thing out of these two is that this line right here for the treble clef, this bottom one ledger line below the staff is middle C. This line, the first line above the bass clef, is middle C. Well, wait a second, how does that make sense? Well, here's how it makes sense. Remember that the treble clef went up here, like it goes up that way, and the bass clef goes up that way too, but it starts lower. So here's your bottom line of your treble clef, and here is your top line of the bass clef. So when you want to uh, be able to write middle C for the treble clef, you actually have to go down to get there, right? That's why it's below the staff on the treble clef. 
When you get, want to get there from the bass clef, that top line, you have to add a line on top because you are going in the opposite direction. Okay, I'm going to let you do all of this fun stuff on your own, drawing the brackets, you know, drawing your treble clef, bass clef, because we've all seen how good I am at doing that. And then what I want you to do is go through these um, and then see if you can figure out what these notes are. I'm going to tell you right now, when in doubt, find middle C. So remember, middle C for the treble clef is right below the staff on a ledger line. How about with the bass clef? Remember I said middle C was on a ledger line of its own above the staff. That's one thing that's probably going to confuse you at first, but don't worry about it. Then what you want to do is probably find all the notes on the staff that we just found basically on this other page. You know, try not to, I mean, glance at this page if you want, but don't just cheat. Don't just be like, oh yeah, that was a G here. And then that's a G, you know, right here. You can do that, but you're not going to learn as much from that as if you kind of just take a mental snapshot of these. And like what I would do is when you're doing the treble clef ones, right? Go over here, go, all right, every good boy does fine, F-A-C-E. You know, every good boy does fine, F-A-C-E. Try to memorize that and then apply it. And then when you get to the bass clef, do the same thing. Go back to this page, memorize it, and apply it. You're going to get so much more out of it than if you just copy it, believe me. Then, once you fill out all the lines and spaces, then go for the higher hanging fruit or lower hanging fruit, I guess you could say, and try to figure out what these notes are. So I'm just going to give you this one since it might perplex you a little bit. This note here, if you had a note right on the line, that would be middle C, right? Well, this is just one note before C, so that's got to be B. And that's generally like the logic you're going to go for, like this one right here in the bass clef. We already know that that's middle C, so this, therefore this one is one note above middle C. All right, here what we're going to do is it's telling you basically what clef to write the note in and what note to write. So B, right? So you got a B here. This time we are going to be going off the staff a little bit, so you write two of them when necessary. Treble clef D. Again, I'm really good at this. It's going to take you a lot more time. There's your D and then so on and so forth. You can do that. That's why we get the book so you can get more out of the course. And um, here's the same thing. This is literally the same page. So I want you to read this on your own. This is going up off the staff and down the staff, but the concept is the same. So part of learning from a teacher is that they're going to push you part of the way and then be like, all right, well, if you know this, then see if you can venture out on your own and figure it out. You're gonna learn, learn a lot more that way. Go through these, fill out these. It's literally the same type of idea. And if you have any trouble, let me know in the comments. Um, join our Discord if you want to um, discuss with other students about this, ask me questions. Link is in the description for you. All right, there are actually a number of um, assignments here. This is a review that I'm not gonna go over right now um, because you actually need the uh, discs at the end of the book right here and I do want to tell you that the answer sheet and answer sheets are towards the back of the book however only look at the answer sheet once you filled out all the questions you know fill out all the questions star the ones you didn't know go back make sure to double check even check the ones you did know since it's pretty early on in your learning experience but yeah this is all for you to do um, the one thing I'm just going to walk you through right now is um, this one is likely going to be like this, where it's like, all right, you know, are these notes going higher or lower? Are they on the high end of the piano, higher in pitch? Are they on the lower end, lower in pitch? We basically talked about that. Um, and then this one right here is you have to hear whether the notes are going up. Or down rather than just are they high or, or are they low so just letting you know that that's generally what you're going to be able to expect out of that and then the rest I think you can probably do on your own this course is going to have a lot of um, a lot more like hands-on coursework than the piano one where the piano one's a lot well the piano one's hands-on coursework but at the piano this is um, a lot of filling out stuff worksheets 
And, uh, you know, it might seem boring. You might not want to do it, but you will be a lot better off for it, understanding this stuff. And you'll understand this by the end of the course, especially as you begin to apply it to whatever you're learning music theory for. Um, you'll understand that knowing this stuff like the back of your hand is going to help you write music way faster, learn piano pieces way faster, learn violin or whatever piece is way faster because you're going to have a way better idea on what's actually happening in the music you're playing. So I hope you learned a lot in this first lesson. You might need to watch this video a few times, go through this stuff a few times. Um, the next lesson will be out on the channel soon and um, you can take as much time as you need between lessons. I would cap, uh, I would like um, give yourself a limit of one week or two weeks. So either be like, I'm either gonna get all the, all the unit stuff done in one week or take two weeks to do it. And the reason I say that is if you're like, all right, well the first week I'm gonna take one week and then three weeks on the next, five weeks on the next, well what's happening? You're taking longer and longer and you're not really going through the course. And you might forget some of the stuff in the beginning of the course by the end if you take too long. So I think reasonably one week, a lot of students will be able to handle. However, if you're new to theory, maybe you learn a little slower, maybe this isn't your ball game as I call it. Um, I don't think it's unreasonable to take two weeks. I would try to get it done in two weeks though. Check out the next lesson in the series right around somewhere and I'll place it there just for you. The Mint Tim here, thanks for coming by today and I'll see you, yeah you, in the next lesson. <laughs>